all right, this is my like 10th time recording this. Um, so I, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update uh, on the lathe as well as some future projects that are coming up. So on the lathe, I have gotten rid of most of the backlash, if not all of the backlash in my cross line. Tore apart my apron, found out that the backlash that was causing me not to be able to thread was due to grease that was built up on the clamshell for the half nut and the uh, I found that the worm gear that drives the surfacing and the facing uh, part of my lathe uh, the worm gear itself has been ate out because they put grease in in there and it trapped a bunch of metal shavings and it's a little bit surely sanded out my uh, gear here. I ordered that because um, I don't have the equipment to make a worm gear, uh, especially one with a keyway in it, as of right now. Um, I, I could make regular straight gear, so I did order the hob for the right size for the apron and some other parts too. Uh, so I do have a hob, so that might be something that I end up doing in the future, because I think that'll also be my chain gear. Uh, I emptied and filled and uh, flushed my headstock, so that's all. I've got new oil. My gearbox ended up getting filled because it was empty, and apparently it was empty when I got the lathe. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a little worried about what's going on in there, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you'll also notice that this is a different color than the rest of the lathe. Uh, I painted this with a epoxy tractor paint, um, an industrial paint. So, this was supposed to be a color that more closely resembled this, at least that's the way the cap looked, but it turns out it's more white than gray, even though it said it was a light gray. but. Hey, uh, it might end up looking really nice in this color, but I'm not going to paint this backsplash here just because uh, it'd get really dirty really fast and it's kind of pointless for me to do, at least at this point. Um, but uh, other than that, that's about everything that co that's covered with the lathe. Uh, I'm going to do a quick video on it once I get everything assembled in the apron and hopefully I have very little backlash and I can thread and uh, auto surface once I get the gear and um, everything together there. Uh, so, I don't think I've said this in other videos. Uh, I, might have, I know I said it in my intro video. But uh, I just graduated this past year from, uh, from a local college with a mechanical engineering degree. Now, I couldn't have done that without the help of um, a scholarship. And uh, there, there's a very, they're a very nice family that provides a scholarship. And they actually provided me one for four years, four and a half years, somewhere around there, the whole time that I was up at my university, and uh, that that helped tremendously. Uh, last year, in order to help start to pay them back, I guess, uh, I decided to, um, I went and made, well, not made, but I painted a, a mailbox for them uh, while I airbrushed it, and I put an American flag on the outside, and a, I think it was a bald eagle on the front. And uh, I brought it down to them and said, "Hey, if you if you want to keep this, you can. If you want to auction it off for the scholarship, go ahead." And they actually ended up keeping it, which you know that kind of made me a little bit uh, happy that they kept it. Um, but this year, uh, I wanted to do something a little bit more special. The last time that I went down there and visited with them, um, they actually gave me something that was relatively personal to them. Uh, I'm not going to explain that just right now. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it later once I get everything assembled uh, with this project. Uh, but what they gave me, they gave me something that I, they gave me more than enough for whatever I, or for whatever I'm going to build in the future uh, with it. Uh, but I was going to use some of the, the stuff that they gave me and build them a, a nice little display table. So I started out with a nice little drawing uh, with dimensions on it, and then I took that drawing and I put it into SOLIDWORKS and I designed everything. Uh, so this is what it ended up looking like. Uh, it's maple and mahogany. I already have all the boards cut to size. I just need to uh, straighten out some of the mahogany boards because the place that I uh, bought the mahogany from, most of it was warped, so I had to fix that. Um, so I'm straightening that out right now. It's kind of a boring, tedious process. I'm not going to include that in a video. But this will be maybe a one or two part, maybe a three part video uh, series on how to build this. and whatnot and uh, these plans will actually be available on my Patreon, uh, possibly on Etsy, I don't know, uh, I haven't decided what I, if I'm going to open up an Etsy account or not, but 
uh, for a certain level subscribers, you will get these plans in a PDF form. Um, as long as you want, uh, know what you're doing, you can actually make this as big or as small as you want. This one's fairly large. It's 56 by 45 and is 36 inch tall. So it is, you know, a pretty big, a pretty big display table. Um, each of these four sides are going to have glass in it as well as the top. Um, so that'll be something that I'm going to be working on. Uh, I also have uh, in the works, we have a close family friend that uh, they own a farm just outside of town and they have a bobcat that has automatic hand controls and they called us up, whoa, what was it, two weeks ago now, um, to come out and help them diagnose what's wrong because whenever they, uh, they could use the one hand control and everything was fine, but once they touched the other hand control, everything would lock up, nothing would work. Uh, so we went out there, I troubleshooted the whole thing, and we found out that the, the control box for the automatic hand control was shot. Um, so that that's a little control computer that sits inside the um, engine compartment of the Bobcat. And, uh, when we pulled it out, we found out that it's filled with epoxy. So that video will be based, uh, will essentially be, you know, how to get this epoxy off, uh, and then it will be how to fix the control box itself and how to find out what the issue is. So uh, we know that right now it's grounding itself out. There is a short somewhere in there to ground, and that's what we're going to have to fix. Uh, I'll do a video on that, just probably short one. Well, the epoxy part will be the longest part, and then the fixing it will be relatively short, because I think I know what's wrong inside the box. Uh, no, I don't have x-ray vision. Uh, at least not that anyone knows of yet. <laughs> um, but that's another project. And then a project that will be coming up probably next year or after this winter. Um, we're, we're, well, I'm kind of running out of space in here. So we'll probably be building a small shed. I'm going to design that and I'm going to make it work for me. Uh, because I'm going to put all my manual tools in that shed. So my uh, stretcher shrinker, my uh, slip roll shear, and my English wheel, which are all behind camera, as well as my hydraulic press and shop crane there. Uh, those will all be going into that shed. So this way it frees up a little bit of space in here. Um, so because of that, uh, because I'm moving my stretcher shrinker and slip roll shear, the table that they're sitting on, my workbench is going out, in, it will be going out into that shed when we're done with it. Um, and we'll be making a new table to sit in here and I'm going to make it a fixturing table considering most of the stuff we do up here is metal work anyway uh, I want to make sure that it will you know we'll be able to clamp stuff to it and weld stuff on it and then all my welders will be uh, there will be a shelf for all my welders maybe the chop saw and whatnot underneath it so this way uh, you free up as much space as possible and uh, that should be an interesting video because I tend to over engineer some stuff um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that you'll end up seeing that in future videos too. Uh, so, that's about it. Uh, I think that covers everything with the lathe and every future project I have planned. Not saying that there's not going to be projects that pop up randomly because someone gives us a call saying, hey, we need help with this. But those are what, what are all in the works and hopefully the videos go fine and I'm going to try to keep them down below 20 minutes. So, thanks for watching and... Uh, Stay safe.